there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on painting daffodils and we're going to use um, watercolor pencils. Now the first thing we're going to do is uh, wet the background. Now don't worry, I'm going to show you how to draw this in a minute, but I want to get my background painted so it has a chance to dry. So what I'm going to do is simply, whoa, let's rinse that brush off a little better. Um, I'm simply going to wet everything that is not the flower or that uh, blade of grass there. I guess it would be the flower's leaf. All those bulbs have those really thick um, leaves. So I'm here just wetting the background. I find that if I tip it to the light, I can see a lot better. I'm just painting on a, a 140 pound card, watercolor card. I really like these because um, it takes the pressure off. I think when you look at a big piece of white watercolor paper, you can kind of get a little freaked out because it's like, oh my gosh, it might be expensive. I don't want to waste all this whole sheet of paper. Um, what am I going to do with it if it doesn't turn out good? I'm, with a watercolor card, even if it's not a masterpiece, you can always mail it and someone will, you know, appreciate the fact that you took a time to write them a letter and even make a hand painted card. So, um, so I really recommend these watercolor cards and I really think they're more affordable than making your own cards. Um, I get a pack of a hundred. I paid like 22 bucks at Dick Blick. Uh, someone told me the price recently went up. So maybe you guys are all like ordering them like crazy and now they're in demand, but, um, that's generally what I pay or about 250 for a 10 pack. They're not, they're not crazy. I've used both the Canson and the Strathmore brand and they're both pretty good. All right, then what I'm going to do is grab one of my pencils that I want to use in the background. Since my um, flowers are going to be yellow, I'm going to use the complementary color, which is purple. So I'm going to use purples and blues in the background. So I'm just using my, um, my pencil as a palette. So this is going to be a really good, um, technique for those of you that have a set of watercolor pencils and maybe don't have paint but you want to have more of a painterly look. Isn't that pretty? And these are just regular watercolor pencils. A lot of times I use my ink tents and oh, by the way you probably shouldn't do that right over your work but I am doing it like that because uh, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. If I did it over to the side you wouldn't be able to see so um, that's why I'm doing it right on top of my work. But um, you know I like this because it's, it's a great way to, uh, to make the most out of your supplies. Plus like maybe you like to, um, to craft upstairs or paint upstairs in the, well, I say upstairs. I, I paint in my basement right now. It's not heated. It's not heated in the winter. So I often will grab all my supplies and go up to the coffee table and, and I create in the living room cause I'm cold. Um, so like if you like to do that and kind of craft in more of a public space in your house, it doesn't take a lot of room. You can just bring your few pencils that you're using and, you know, a little container of water and you get to go. I just, you know, that's so pretty. I just love how um, you define this negative space and all of a sudden you can see how pretty your picture is going to be. I also want to use some of this pretty um, jade green. Oh, by the way, that color I used was dark violet number 25 from the Derwent watercolor line. Um, if you have those pencils, my set's a few years old, probably more like I don't know, 10 years old. I, I've had it for a long time. Ooh, that's bright. Um, but I recently swatched out my colors. I made a little color chart and there's all these colors. As you can see, they're barely used because I didn't realize how pretty they were. And, um, you know, the more you kind of see what your materials can do, the more you're going to use them. And I mean, this is almost just pretty just as a background, isn't it? I mean, just even if you did nothing else to your picture, but this, it's so pretty. A little bit more of this. Now, I, this is a, kind of a, not really a new to me technique, but I always thought, well, I'm not going to bother with that. I have watercolor paints. Why would I bother using the pencils like that? What a pain. But it's pretty, you know, it's funny how you just try something new and it's like you get all these new ideas. I think that, you know, learning new things as often as we can is so good for our brains. I've got a little um, Prussian blue here. And you know, you don't have to have these same pencils. If you've got a set of Crayola watercolor pencils, which by the way are pretty good, go ahead and use those. You don't have to have the same set. You don't have to go out and buy what I use. Just, um, you know, use the closest color you have if you're trying to follow along or if you don't like these colors, use other ones. Now, as you can see, I got some little spatters there because I was kind of doing this over my, um, over my picture. Hey, by the way, this is a great way to get the spattering technique if you're using watercolor pencils. I love the spattering technique. I know it's not for everybody, but um, I can blot that away in a minute with a paper towel. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't know if I wet that area first. I'm going to go in there with a little water. So, you know, I mean, the more you're never going to, don't, don't worry about wasting materials because 
it's not a waste. You're going to learn something, even if it's the most hideous um, painting to ever have lived, which I'm sure it won't be. But even if, even so, you're still going to learn something from it. Now, if that, if say your colors weren't blending the way you wanted, or you just weren't happy with it, you can always spritz it with some water and, um, and just, you know, see what happens. So, you know, don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to pause the video so I can find a paper towel, and then I'm going to show you how to sketch this out. I don't know why I always forget to bring a paper towel over here. I always use one. Jeez Louise. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside just so it can dry a bit, and hopefully it'll be dry by the time we're done our sketch. Um, and what I'm going to use is just a marker because I want you to see what I'm doing, um, because I know my pencil lines can be kind of light. So um, this is how I begin when I'm drawing. I break the shape of the flower into easy, simple shapes, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing over here for the smaller flower. Of course, I'm doing, I would be doing this with a pencil and having my lines much lighter. You could even actually draw this out on a, um, on a scrap of paper and then use carbon paper to transfer it over. Not carbon paper, graphite paper. It's like carbon paper, but it's pencil lines, basically. And then so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the center part of that iris, which is kind of like a trumpet. I'm going to add that ruffly edge there. I am going to add my petals using my circle that I drew as a guide. See, I'm just going to go around, add my petals. This is a great thing. Do it if you have a chance and you're not doing anything. You can always kind of doodle stuff like this. And then over here again, I've got my roughly centered. I'm actually flipping this video. Um, I did that with my uh, knitting, a knitting video the other day, and I thought, well, I'm going to try it with one of my painting ones. I don't have to paint upside down. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see how I like it. The only the only downside is I have to wait a while after I upload it. I have to kind of babysit it and you know flip it around and then publish it after so that you don't have to watch me paint upside down. <laughs> All right, put our little stamens in there. And these guys usually have. If you're looking at it from the side, you usually see that bend in the uh, flower. This one will have just a little stem coming down underneath, and then we'll put our little blade of grass in there. And really, that's all there is to it. See, it's very simple. All right, let's see how dry our first thing is. It's still a little wet, so what I'm going to do is pause it and dry it with my heat gun, and then we'll come back and paint our flowers. Here's a quick tip. You can tell if your paper's dry if you just kind of rest the back of your hand on it. If it feels cool to the touch, it's not dry yet. Um, I used my heat gun and dried it up, and I want to show you what happens if you get a little puddle of uh, water. If it doesn't, your background doesn't dry evenly, you get this kind of ruffly little thing called a bloom. I think it's pretty. Some people like to not have that, so if you want to avoid it, just make sure that you have no puddles um, in your background and you won't, um, you won't have a bloom. And if you do get a puddle, what you do is you take a dry paintbrush and just set it in there and suck up the extra water. That's all there is to it. All right, so what I'm going to do is use a little kind of orangey color. And look at this. This is These are all the pencils that I'm using right here. All right, I've got them all right here. These are all my colors. I have a set of 72 watercolor pencils, but you don't want to use all of those pencils because if you do, you're going to have this crazy discord. It's, not, it's going to look very amateurish. Um, you'll get a much better look if you just choose a few and you work with those. You can even buy your pencils one at a time and um, use the colors you're going to use more often and that will really, it'll help you as a beginner because it'll teach you how to control your colors and, um, and how to really use every color you get so you won't have those colors in your set that you never use. So limited supply is, is a great way to go if you're a beginner. Not only does it save you money, but you'll actually learn more. I'm adding a little of this. Uh, this is Spectrum Orange 11 um, or it's just basically like a regular pretty middle of the road orange or lighter orange if you want to um, just use what you have, which you should absolutely do. There's um, nothing really that special about these regular Derwent watercolor pencils. Um, just just uh, just use what you have. Or, you know, I do like the Derwents if you, um, if you are looking for a brand. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I've got kind of a medium yellow. This is um, Deep Cadmium, number six, if you do have the Derwents. And you're, if you go out and buy Derwents, they're not going to look like this because they change the color of the barrels. This, I don't even know if they're hexagonal anymore. Um, so they used to be gray, and I liked it because they actually had a bigger reference on the end. Now they have the tiny reference, and I think they're like dark blue. But, um, so if you go run out and buy them because you really enjoyed this tutorial, um, you look, make sure that uh, you don't freak out if they, if they don't look the same because they just don't. Now these petals that are kind of tucked in behind, I am using this dark, this uh, deep cadmium yellow on because I want them to kind of fall behind and be a little bit darker. 
because I have a little bit lighter of a yellow I'm going to use in a minute. I like to do, uh, to get a smooth blend, I like to do all my coloring first, and then, um, then I go in and add the water. All right, just add a little bit more of that. Then I'm going to go kind of fill in with this uh, lemon. It's lemon cadmium, but any lemony yellow. So if you wanted to go and just kind of stick to the basics and go to like Hobby Lobby, which I actually saw that they have these in open stock, um, you know, buy your pencils just like you would your watercolor paints in a tube. You want a cool yellow, like a lemon. You want a warm yellow, like a cadmium or a gamboge. Uh, you want a cool red, like a crimson or a pink or rose matter or magenta. And you want a warm red, like a um, crim like a cadmium or a vermilion. Um, you want, I would get a sap green because I just think that's such a beautiful color and hard to replicate. Burnt Sienna is a beautiful brown, I recommend. And um, really, <clears throat> that's about all you need. You need two blues. You want like a Prussian blue and an ultramarine blue. So that way you can just kind of mix and match. Um, but really, that'll pretty much do ya. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of the, this yellow also, this lemon yellow also into my stem and my leaves. All right, and then I want to grab some um, light green. This is very much like sap green. It's called May Green, and it's number 48 if you are using the Derwents. And I'm putting a little bit in the center and a little bit on the stamen. I'm going to put that in the stems. Now remember, if you don't get enough color, you can always go back in later with it and use the brush on the tip of the pencil to add more color. So, um, and that's just something, you know, the more you experiment with it, the, the better you'll get judging how much color to put down. Like I'm used to using the ink tents because they're kind of like my, been my favorite since I bought them. Um, and I, you know, tend to go, you can't go too hard with those or you get really, really bright color. And so sometimes I kind of forget and I, um, I do that here too. And I think I might add just a little smidgen of purple here because it kind of has this brownish skin around it. And I know when it mixes with the yellow, it will give me that kind of brownish color that I'm looking for. All right, now let's uh, go with the water. I'm going to use a small flat brush because it won't carry too much water. I really don't want a ton of water here. Um, and just personally, I like to go into my darker areas first, but you know, that's up to you. I think by going in with your darker color first, you add some value and um, it just helps you. I think it just kind of helps define everything. Now, isn't that pretty? It just blends so well. I'm going to go over here to the uh, outside here with this darker. Yellow. I do notice that um, when I'm using watercolor pencils, my colors don't want to um, run into each other as much. So you do have a little bit more control. Um, I find that a lot of people prefer that because they can, um, like if you like to spend a lot of time on a drawing, maybe in pen and ink, then you can go over it with the watercolor pencils and just add, you know, very carefully, very gingerly, you can add your color and not worry too much about contamination or things blending or getting out of control. So it just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for. Um, and I did get a request to do a tutorial um, of the watercolor pencils, so that's why I'm doing that. I just heard my kids and husband get back from basketball upstairs. They're probably going to come tramping down the stairs any moment because we're uh, we're going to be decorating the house for Christmas. We uh, we cleaned this morning. I said that was one of my conditions, that we got to clean the house first. My other condition was that... Um, that I get to get a cute picture of my children for my Christmas card. So I got to get them in the right mood. They want to decorate the house. All right. I need a Christmas card photo guys and <laughs> work with me here. So uh, hopefully, hopefully I will get a good picture today and then I'll show you a tutorial on how I make my Christmas cards, but I might have to wait a couple days. I want to make sure I can get them in the mail first. <laughs> I don't want anyone that watches my, uh, my channel that gets my Christmas cards to be surprise too early. I want him to get it in the mail first. Although, you know, I think about it and I really don't think many people I know in real life actually watch my videos. <laughs> if they did, they'd probably think I was completely insane. <laughs> Although, you know, it's funny. I, I do some of my, uh, my son's like schoolmates will say that they, uh, that they watch my videos. It's funny. The little, uh, his crafty friends. I'm sure he's just so thrilled. He's probably like, oh my gosh, mom, you're so embarrassing. <laughs> Which, you know, I am. He'll think I'm cool one day. I hope. My girls still think I'm cool, but my son, I don't know. I think he thinks I'm a big dork. Well, I am, but still. Uh, okay, I'm going to go in here and do the stems. Look how quickly this is coming along. And I'm going to get this little brown. But see how that purple mixed with the yellow and green and made that lovely little brown? I like that. All right, what are we doing? Oh, we're at 14 minutes. We are going to finish this under 20. That is good. Good news. Good news. Good times. 
Don't you love quick painting projects? I sure do. I've got to get this done before somebody tromps down the stairs and cracks me up or something. I just heard, oh, the dog just came down. <laughs> I heard a jingle jangle. That's Hazel for sure. All right, now um, oh, I want to do the, uh, oh, there's a water pump. So I'm going to talk really loud to finish this up. All right, maybe I'll pause it until that stops. Okay, I'm back. I have guests in the studio with me, so I'm going to try to wrap this up. They're very anxious to decorate the Christmas tree, so uh, they're waiting on me. <laughs> uh, what I'm doing here is I um, took taking some of the uh, orange colored pencil and I'm just accentuating the orange areas uh, so I can add a little more depth of color here. And it's up to you whether you want to blend it out with water afterwards or if you want to leave it bright and uh, if you want to leave those pencil marks in there. I like to blend it out, but that's completely up to you. And um, I would actually go, I would uh, blend it out as you're building up the color so that you don't end up with more than you want. Um, and then if you did want some like defined lines, like say where the um, the center of the flower kind of has these wrinkles and crinkles, like if you wanted to define that, you can go right in on that wet paper and you can pull some through. Now, if you're used to the ink tense pencils and you're trying regular watercolor pencils, it's not gonna be so vivid. If you have the ink tense pencils and you're following along with those, which this will be fine with the ink tense pencils, colors will be brighter and a li maybe a little bit tougher to control, but it, they'll definitely be pretty. Um, you'll end up with some really dark lines there. So just, um, just be aware of that as you're working. And um, if you're having trouble seeing anything I'm working on here, just um, if you're watching this on my YouTube watch page or on my blog, you probably have a small screen. Just click in the little corner. Um, where is it? Oh, I don't know. The bottom of the screen. I'm going to flip this. So I think it's down here in the bottom of the screen. Um, you'll see a little spot where you can magnify the screen. Um, I think it's down near the YouTube logo, but that'll make it a little bit bigger for you. It'll make it a little bit easier for you to see. All right, and I do want to add a little more green to the stamens. And maybe a little bit more yellow too, the lemon yellow, because I want a, a nice vivid bright. And lemon yellow is closer to green on the color wheel. Just make sure if you're going between two kind of different colors like orange and green, you clean your brush off so you don't end up with contamination. Then uh, I want to add a little bit more shading on the petals just to give them a little bit more interest. And uh, daffodil petals are very thin and papery and light, so you don't have to um, you don't have to add too much here. You don't want to overdo it or you'll make them look stiff and unnatural. You can add a little bit of orange into the petals too if you feel like you need a little bit more um, a little bit I don't know, more pacity or something. Um, and you can even add a little bit of watered down purple. And I would put the purple on your brush and then add it if you want to add some shadows. Um, just try not to overdo it because you will get brown if you overdo it. It's just kind of if you want to add a little bit of a little bit of shadow here and there. You don't want to add too much. You might make it look like the flower's gone by and it's kind of cruddy looking. So just use that with a little caution. Add a little more water to that. I do like the small whoop, on, brush. I do like the small flat brushes for this because it does seem like it doesn't hold too much water and it really pushes the pigment around. Um, it, I find that these don't hold enough water when I'm watercoloring with my regular paints, but I really like them for like water soluble pastels or watercolor crayons or watercolor pencils because they just have enough. They hold just enough water. You don't need too much water with those mediums, and um, they're stiff enough to gently push the pigment around without damaging your paper. This is a half inch flat Aqualon brush, if you're curious, but um, they, they don't have to be Aqualon. There's, I just, I happen to prefer the uh, clear handles, the plastic handles, because um, I have a tendency of leaving my brushes in my water. I get distracted or the kids, you know, come down and want to decorate a Christmas tree and I've left my brushes in the water. And if I don't, um, and if that happens in their wood, then the paint cracks and my bristles get, my ferrule gets loose and it's not very fun to paint with. So there you go, there it is. Uh, we have daffodils. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And um, please, thumbs up and subscribe and tell your friends and share it on Pinterest and Facebook and wherever you meet people. I would just love it. <laughs> I wanna thank you so much for watching and um, until next time, happy crafting.